Hello YouTube. I found this machete at an antique store. It's supposed to be like a hundred plus years old, but who knows. Uh, the blade's about 14 inches. That's 14. Overall it's like 21. 21 inches. Keep a little close up of the handle. We're going to grind this side. Get the rivets out. We'll make our own new ones. There's a few cracks in the wood where I super glue, but we want to save this. But a lot of this is going to be done by hand. Uh, different grits of sandpaper, and we're probably going to put gun blowing on it. We don't want a big shiny machete. We want it to look dark. Uh, a lot of damage in here. I don't know if you can see it where somebody hammered with it. See that? Pretty nasty. Look where it's rolled the edge over. No problem. We may change this and set this back a little bit more. Our own design. There's some chips in it. There's a little bit of waviness to the blade, but it's a machete. It's for chopping weeds. It's not a, <laughs> not a samurai sword. But here you go. We'll bring you back a few clips now and then to show you a little bit of the progress. Uh, I haven't made a video in a while. Most of the video I posted I made here a while back uh, and then had a whole bunch of reserves. So. Uh, it is the beginning of, well, I don't know what it is, we're in the first week of March here. Today is like the 6th, yeah, it's a Friday, first Friday of March, there you go, we'll look up the date later. Uh, nice out, like 44 degrees, but the cool breeze makes it nasty. Uh, we had 60 mile an hour winds yesterday, believe it or not. Like a steady 40 mile an hour wind, 60 mile an hour wind gusts in my area. That was kind of scary. But anyway, two minutes of yakking. Let's start doing a little work. I want to give you a good look at it before we start. So you can see how that. I mean, it's just, it's even covered in mud and dirt. So stay tuned if you're interested. Okay, here's how we did this. We took the Dremel with the little round ball diamond bit drilled that then we took our drill bit then we went to our bench block and started driving the pin out and what we decided to do is we're going to put brass in here that's just bigger now i don't know if i cracked this or it was cracked before until i really look at the wood but all the cracks can be filled with super glue because we're going to use the same handle and we'll epoxy it back on so it's tight but there you go make a dimple with your drill with your uh, dremel I might as well show you make a dimple with that then take your drill bit about that size don't get too big you just chew in the wood but it didn't matter here I went a little bigger with the drill bit because said I'm gonna drill these out and put quarter inch brass pins in here so it looks pretty there you go we're off to getting this handle off here okay thanks to the bench block and two different size punches look at this the first pin wobbled so much it broke in half when I was trying to drive it out. Cause see the grooves? That's how many years it wobbled. I'm believing this thing is 100 years old. Takes early 1900s. This only goes on one way and I'm looking on the end. I've got it marked. See where that was made in the lathe? It had to be because there's like the center hole. That's probably whatever grabbed it. Yeah, we'll clean it up. If it works crack, we're going to fill it full super glue. Let it cure. Before we sand it, we'll go ahead and do this. Sometimes we'll get a thin knife blade or razor blade and they kind of spread the wood apart so the glue will flow in quicker. And that's what I always use. It goes in faster and dries than wood glue. Yeah, I'll take a picture of these rivets just for the fun of it. So stay tuned for more. Okay, another one of the little quick shots. I took this to the anvil on my vise and hammered that down. Cause see how much metal is there? See that? Why file away when we can put it back? Remember, it's only machete. It's not some expensive old antique knife or nothing. We're just going to hammer that down, too. We're trying to put the metal back and without heating it. This is soft metal. It's flexible. I don't know if you can see it's machete. It'll, it, you know, it, it'll do. It'll work. There. That way you know what I mean. I might snap a couple pictures of that, too, just for my reference. Okay, another quick clip. See where the file is laying flat here, but I'm rounding that edge over a little bit. I could have made more work by hammering that down instead of just taking the edge off, so that'd be your decision. I actually think now that I made more work instead of just filing it off, the burr off. I was just trying to get more metal to go this way, you know, so I can keep the shape of the knife. 
and this side's really untouched this is just why hammered and that's where I'll start filing that but just clamp it down the edge of my table I have it hanging off my table but I clamp it down because you're not putting that much pressure on there I mean this is gonna flex like I said this blade it's it's a machete it flexes flexible steel so. okay back to work I so I'd show you the progress where the file actually was laying it flat going across there so it's gonna be a lot of work with sandpaper I don't want to take power tools of this I want to put gun blowing any scratches I want going most the same direction so stay tuned for more I think I said that before but anyway you know what I mean let's get this done let's talk more work well what do you think do you think this is a hundred year old hand forge? That's just a piece of 60 grit sanding belt. I think it's 60. It's just a cheap spray. This don't have a stinky smell to it. That's why I can use it inside. I do have my door open about four inches. See that? That don't really look like mill scale. See how it's all splotchy? We're not going to worry about the cutting edge yet. No, it's easy what you think. See where I got this soaking down here? Um... I usually don't do nothing without gloves on, but uh, it does help sand the stuff off. And we did find our quarter inch. We're all excited. We got enough brass. Quarter inch brass pin. We just got to get through this. If we have to, we'll heat this and let it calm down because it's never going to be near the cutting edge. This will not be sharpened all the way. It's probably going to be sharpened about so far down, maybe halfway. We don't use this. When I was a kid, we used what I called a corn knife when you went out and Worked in bean fields cutting weeds. Uh, we never sharpened up here in case you bump your leg. Just sharpen like the six, eight inches. So that'll never be sharpened. Not on mine. So there we go. Back to work. Just want to give you these little updates. This is going to have to probably be more than a one part video on this. But oh well, we're having fun. Uh, we're going to bring this back, make a nice tool that we like to use. Well, Excuse me. Well, that's pretty wimpy. <laughs> it's so quiet out, I can't talk very loud. I'm so used to being quiet working. What do you think? You think that's just rust, deep rust pitting, or you think that was when it was forged or something? I mean, I used every grit. I, these are like 60 grit off of sanding this sander. You can tell how filthy it was. I'm blowing the camera out. What? Do you think it's just some old machete or is it really old it doesn't really matter that much but we did put some super glue in some of the cracks on this let it set so that'll be way later so it can set for a couple days so when I do put it on here there will be some epoxy in here uh, I do a little bit of thinking how I'm going to make these holes bigger to put the brass pin in like I said, if I can drill through this without heating it and changing the metal. So, all I know is it used a lot of years to wear that pin out where it broke just by hitting it with the punch. There wasn't much left. That was a lot of slopping back and forth. There's a lot of chopping to wear a pin out like that in there. There you go. We're going to take a break. I think this will be the end of this part. And next time when I come back, we're going to be decided what we're going to do. Uh, it's very hard to get all, all this stuff is just rust that's turned black so if you put gun blowing on here it's gonna look kind of nasty but we don't really worry about that if it could be just a dark color with gun blue because we're not leaving it silver we're not leaving it metal color we, we want it dark looking so there you go uh, either way I'll come back to end the video we'll have something else to put on in so it's break time right now my arms are tired we did cheat and use the electric drill with a wire brush a little bit, but the rest was a lot of hand sanding. What's it called? I've been spending a long time out here, so I said break time and I'll be back.